good y'all it's your boy ross back out again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 wwe wrestlers who shockingly defeated john cena clean we all know that is a rarity <laughs> super cena uh as he used to be uh john boy he does not lose that much rarely and especially clean so we gotta check out this list appreciate all the love and support on the channel let's do the damn thing Throughout his tenure as face of the WWE, John Cena was extremely protected. Just like Facts. all faces of the company in WWE, they were reserved in having Cena take losses, and if he was ever gonna lose, WWE would do everything in their power to protect him. Notwithstanding Cena's strong bond, there are a number of times that Cena has lost completely clean, and this has usually been to a main event talent and not traditionally someone that needed elevating. Although criticism was previously directed at Cena for being unwilling to put talent over, in recent years Cena seems willing to put anyone over and truly help pave the way for the future of WWE. Mm -hmm. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE wrestlers who defeated John Cena clean. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Part of that could definitely was Vince. <laughs> definitely part of that was Vince, part of it, John. And follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and an on-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, Kevin Owens. Now in terms of main roster debuts, Kevin Owens' mm -hmm. main roster debut in May of 2015 certainly set a high standard. Owens, who was the reigning NXT champion at the time, interrupted the then US champion John Cena. Owens would then lay Cena out, instantly establishing himself as a big deal and consequently assured that fans took him seriously. Yep. Owens and Cena would then collide at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view and amazingly, Cena put Owens over. Owens and Cena had a fantastic match and it was without a doubt the highlight of a lackluster pay-per-view. Him defeating Cena was the right call and it wasn't a move that anyone saw coming. But... For those who don't know, this was one of my first times seeing who Kevin Owens was. Deadass. When he came on to Monday Night Raw, I wasn't watching NXT like that. When I saw him, I was like, damn, who is this guy? This champion from NXT. And then when I saw what they were building up to and him actually beating John Cena, I was clean. I was like, oh, shit, I got to check this guy out. I got to check out who he is. Like. And that's what got me started into checking out NXT and who Kevin Owens was and stuff like that. Because cause of them putting him over, I became a fan of Kevin Owens. Dead ass. That's how I became a fan. They put him over. I was like, yo, I got to see more of this guy. The victory cemented Owens as a serious player who was a legitimate threat to anyone on the main roster. Loved a it. credit should be offered to Cena for doing the right thing on this particular evening and making Owens a household name on the main roster. Number 9, The Undertaker. John Cena and The Undertaker have collided twice mm -hmm. on pay-per-view during their decorated WWE it's careers. Not that many times. first pay-per-view match came in 2003, just as Cena was ascending to the main event scene in the company. The match, which took place at the Vengeance event, is rather underrated and showed that the two had great chemistry. The dead man would win this match clean as a whistle, as it was rare for The Undertaker to lose at all, and yep. never mind on a pay-per-view at this stage of his WWE tenure. The two would then collide 15 years later in 2018 at WrestleMania 34. This would be a babyface versus babyface showdown, and the match mainly existed so that Undertaker could redeem himself from the year prior. Yeah, this, at WrestleMania th that's pretty much all that match was. And then 33. Yeah, it was pretty much a squash match, a glorified squash match against John Cena. <laughs> the dead man was supposed to retire in a match against Roman Reigns, but the match was terrible, and it forced Taker to stay active for several more years. The match was a complete squash, with Taker just performing all his famous moves on Cena. Going into the match, nobody expected a squash, as fans had long yeah. waited an extended match between the two, and even Taker himself expressed disappointment with the lack of match time, albeit short. Yeah, that shit was a squash. I was expecting at least about 10, 15 minutes, because this is they've only wrestled each other like twice, which is crazy to think about. They've only wrestled each other twice. So it's like, it's one of those type of things where it's like, yeah, you wanted to see this. Well, especially twice on pay-per-view, you just wanted to see them actually have this match, you know, at WrestleMania and, and see what they could do. But they didn't have much time, I guess. The match showed just how selfless Cena had become by 2018, and he made it his mission to make The Undertaker look as good as humanly possible. Number 8, Triple H. The most well-known match which took place between John Cena and Triple H was without a doubt their WrestleMania 22 mm -hmm. encounter. 
This was a main event WWE title match which saw Cena come out victorious. The two collided several more times over the years and Triple H has actually defeated Cena a number of times in completely clean victories. The most famous of these took place at the Night of Champions pay-per-view in 2008. The two once again faced off for the WWE title but this time the game was victorious. This was a fantastic match mm -hmm. and it was about time that Triple H finally got his win back over the multi-time WWE World Champion. Number 7, Alberto Del Rio. Damn, the I John Cena Alberto US title was, open challenge is one of the most acclaimed time clean. periods of Cena's career. Every week Cena would come out on Raw and declare an open challenge to anyone Great on the moment. roster. Great moment this for the Cena United had States tremendous matches with the likes of Sami Zayn and Cesaro. This exciting run came to an end at Hell in a Cell pay-per-view in 2015 as Cena dropped the title to a then-returning Alberto Del Rio. I forgot Del Rio he did. returned to the company and cleanly defeated Cena with a kick to the face to win the title. This decision received widespread criticism as fans believed that the individual that defeated Cena should have been a brand new talent and yeah. someone who needed a huge win and not somebody that had already been pushed to the moon. Which is understandable. I still think Sami Zayn would have been a perfect pick. For him to win won that title at that moment from John. Number six, Daniel Bryan. By the time WWE arrived at the SummerSlam pay per view in 2013, mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan's popularity had skyrocketed. It was clear that WWE needed to give Bryan the WWE title yep. and they were going to have him defeat John Cena in the main event of the biggest pay per view. This, of this was a good going match. Into the match. Cena had an established injury, but with Bryan not cheating or using any illegal tactics in the match, yep, he beat his him clean. was still classed as a completely clean win. This was the match that saw Bryan debut the running knee finisher. Yep. While some fans claimed that Bryan debuted the finisher so Cena wouldn't have to tap out, it was great to see Bryan secure a huge victory. Yeah, because he was. He at that time, Daniel was known for just tapping people out with the the yes lock or whatnot. He was known for tapping people out. John was definitely not about to tap out to John Cena. I mean, to uh, Daniel Bryan, because that would have been in fucking sane. That would have been ridiculous if he would have tapped him out. So he, you know, he they decided to use the running knee. Oh, this. Watching that live, I was so happy. I was like, yes, they did the right thing. He beat him clean. They had the confetti. The crowd was going crazy. And then Triple H screws him over. Oh, this was so good. Such a great way to end SummerSlam. Over him. The match itself delivered, even with Cena's injury. And it yep. was a shame that they didn't revisit the feud and do another match between the two of the all-time WWE greats. This was good. Number five, AJ Styles. One of the most memorable rivalries this was good of John too. Cena's career was his feud I forgot with AJ Styles. He beat him clean. Cena and AJ had phenomenal chemistry inside the ring, and the matches between the two helped take AJ to the next level. Ooh, they their were SummerSlam great. match in 2016 is perhaps their most appreciated, ooh, ooh, ooh. and it saw Cena do the right thing and put AJ over clean in the middle of the ring. Going into the match, there was some concern that WWE were going to have Cena win and officially end AJ's push, but to everyone's surprise, AJ was victorious. Number four, Kurt Which is Angle. great. Great Kurt move. Angle has been synonymous with John Cena's career from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. when Cena first made his main roster debut Ruthless in 2002. Aggression. Angle was his first opponent, and he was also the first person to defeat Cena. The two had several notable and high-profile matches, and most of the time Cena was victorious, but earlier on in Cena's career, Cena struggled to attain a victory over the Olympic gold medalist. Take, for instance, their match at No Mercy pay-per-view in 2003. This was a clean submission win for Angle as Cena tapped out from the ankle lock. That's crazy, Angle would pin bro. Cena several more times, but these were in multi-man matches rather than traditional singles matches. There was a I believe that's one of the last times John Cena ever tapped. I believe. I could correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that was one of the the only and the last time he ever tapped after that. I, th I, I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that was the only and last time he tapped, like, to lose the match. Type Push from fans to Could see Cena wrong. as Angle's final opponent in WWE. And this would have seen the two arch rivals face off one more time at WrestleMania 35. Which I would have loved. WWE had other ideas and instead opted to have Angle retire against Baron Corbin. Number three, yeah. Brock Lesnar. Yep. The beast Brock Lesnar has always seemed to have John Cena's number. Mm -hmm. The two would wrestle for the first time on SmackDown in 2002, and this would see Lesnar defeat Cena cleanly. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to 2003, and Lesnar would soundly defeat Cena at the Backlash pay-per-view in a match which marked Cena's first time in a pay-per-view world title match. 
In 2014, WWE booked Cena versus Lesnar for the world title as the main event of SummerSlam, and WWE Jeez. decided to book Lesnar to legitimately squash Cena. Him. Oh my god! This was gosh. unbelievable to witness, as never before had the face of WWE been sacrificed in this he manner. He was sacrificed. It was truly memorable, but it was the right call as yep. Lesnar was on the run of his career after ending the Undertaker's legendary WrestleMania streak just a few months prior. Number yep, two, The Rock. Sense. At the WrestleMania 28 match between The Rock and John Cena was marketed as once in a lifetime match. Which it was. Therefore, fans expected Cena to be victorious. Mm -hmm. Cena was the full time WWE guy, and if there was going to be a rematch, it made little sense for The Rock to win. However, The Rock ended up defeating Cena, and it quickly surfaced that they planned on doing another match between the two at yep. the following year's event. The WrestleMania 28 match was well received by fans, and The Rock it was a great match. was a pleasant surprise to those critical of Cena's strong booking. It was a the great match. The question of if a rematch was needed has continued to be raised since, and the common consensus was that WWE should have left the feud alone after their initial WrestleMania 28 encounter. Yeah, there shouldn't have been a rematch. The story should have always been. I get it. If they were going to do a rematch, John needed to be a heel. But they never, the story was there. He couldn't beat The Rock. The guy that he looked up to and emulated at some point, he couldn't beat him. Then he just can't win matches. And finally he snaps, he goes rogue. Like, because after this, this is when he faced Brock. And then he beat Brock, which was stupid. He should have lost to Brock. Then he should have just kept losing till finally he snapped. And he went heel. He called out The Rock again. Then you have him beat him as a as a heel. I think that would have been much better. Counter and number one, Roman Reigns. And following John Cena You're taking right. on a part-time role in WWE, WWE needed a new top guy, and their default choice was Roman Reigns. Reigns struggled to get over in the manner WWE wanted, as his connection I with don't the think audience John was manufactured. Is ever beating authenticity. Beat Beat One Roman of the Reigns. ways WWE would try to pass the torch from Cena to Reigns was by having them wrestle in a dream match at No Mercy in 2017. Reigns naturally won this match, but it did a little to help Reigns as a babyface, as most fans worked out what WWE were trying to uh, do. Yeah. Thankfully, they would eventually turn Reigns heel in 2020, and this was a smart move, and the character work that Reigns had delivered since has been exceptional. Reigns and Cena would collide in a rematch at SummerSlam Great in 2021, match. and Cena once again put Reigns over. Cena had seemingly returned just to put Reigns over, and this was a decision which was applauded by fans. Yeah. As in recent years, Cena has successfully turned once negative perceptions around, and has consequently become one of the most universally beloved and respected superstars That's so of all crazy. Time. But there you have it, folks. How WWE time wrestling. has changed everything. Now that you don't see John as much, now that he's not in the main event like that, he's doing his own thing in, in Hollywood, and he comes back, and he usually puts somebody over. That is so amazing to see. And people love John now. John, when John Cena returns, he's usually a huge baby face. There's rarely any boos. If they do boo, it's just they do the John Cena suck song like they do the Kurt Angle song. And it's so crazy seeing that, that all these years later, he's putting people over and people don't see him as much. They want to see him more. He's like a huge baby face, bro. This is the reaction Vince always really wanted for him for a long time, you know? So it's just crazy how time changes everything. And, you know, when you don't see someone as much, you yearn for them more. And that's really what's happened here. And he's putting people over. So I'm all for it. Um, I know someone asked what they want me to see John Cena get a, one more title run. Would it be cool? Yes. Do I think it needs to happen? No. I just don't think it needs to happen. Because obviously he can't even really do that. He can't really give his obligations to WWE like that anymore because of his filming schedule and what he has going on in Hollywood. So that probably won't happen. But I would love to see him have one go around with somebody, a nice little feud for his send off, uh, you know, in Hollywood for good. Cause at some point, John is gonna hang it up when it comes to this wrestling stuff. So at some point it's gonna happen. But yeah, man, this was a great video, man. I forgot some of these people beat John Cena. Comment down below, let me know what was your favorite favorite i guess you could say um moment when someone beat john cena what was your favorite moment one of my favorite moments i can remember off the top of my head is when bray wyatt 
eliminated John Cena in the Elimination Chamber, bro. Do you guys remember that? Do you guys remember Bray Wyatt eliminating John Cena in the Elimination Chamber match for the WWE Championship? That was such a great moment because it was like, oh, my God. I think they're going to give it to Bray Wyatt here. Oh, it was so, so good. That was such a great moment, and they dropped the ball with Bray. Oh, but that moment right there, I was like, holy shit, there's change. Oh, that was so good, man. But comment down below, let me know. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 100K. I appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.